Good day. We've got CEO Kent Jacobs of Flight Aerospace Solutions joining us today. Flight has just announced two contract wins for the collection of weather data for the U.S. and U.K. National Weather Agency. Kent's here to discuss and outline the implications for flight. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. It's Tuesday, September the 12th. Please remember this is neither recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Ken, thanks a lot for joining us and congrats on the uh, contract wins. When we recently spoke on our webinar, you mentioned opportunities in the weather aircraft-based observations market, and now you just announced these two contract wins on that. Seems to validate uh, your the direction that you are going on there. Um, can you please bring us up to speed on these contracts and some details of uh, what it means for flight? All right. So the with the the UK Met and Logan Air, they uh, you, you've got the the hardware sales agreement is part of that number you announced. That's going to get installed on the Logan Air aircraft, and then the U, UK Met is going. You, you're going to sell the recurring. A, uh, weather data to the UK Met, and that's the long-term SAS contract. And and you're saying as well that once that equipment is installed on the Logan Air aircraft, then you could possibly provide additional data services to Logan Air as well. So there is the potential for another uh, SAS revenue stream through this uh, agreement. Absolutely. Uh, the uh, the three way contracts um, part of that is is hidden from flight in that the UK Met and Logan Air have a component of the agreement that we don't uh, that we haven't seen, but it does mean that Logan Air is getting these products, the Afer's Edge and the Certus Satcom, installed on their aircraft, and it's being uh, it, it's being subsidized, and the airline has every opportunity to use those products in the way that we would normally sell it to an airline. So the wireless QAR, the wireless quick access recorder functionality, the aircraft interface device functionality where we supply the data to the flight deck. All of these features that we would normally sell an edge uh, to an airline for are now available for us to upsell to the airlines. All right, well, that sounds like a, another good opportunity. Uh, for the U.S. NOAA contract, there was not an airline announced with that news release. Um, is uh, will there be, or or, or has uh, have you sorted out who the airline partner or partners is going to be? Yeah, uh, it hasn't been released yet. We are working with NOAA. Uh, I mentioned that NOAA is looking for some data from specific parts of the world. Uh, so we have to work. Uh, we have to work that three-way magic again with the airline or the airlines that we think are appropriate for the uh, the data collection that NOAA is looking for. Uh, we're absolutely confident that we're going to. Uh, we, we've we know who we want to work with. Uh, it's just a matter of us putting all the details together, setting up the contract properly. Uh, NOAA is so confident in it that they went ahead and award, awarded the contract to us. Um, we're just we're just a tiny bit away from that. So the set, like the this first part of the contract makes no sense if there isn't a second part of the contract with the airline and the equipment and, and, and so forth. So that's the sort of second shoe to drop on this. It's not a matter of like they announced they allowed you to announce it. So it, it, they're, they're highly confident. And it's just a matter of time until the, the final negotiations are, are done and some news on that will be announced. Absolutely. The uh, the flight WVSS sensor, uh, the, the WVSS2 sensor, it needs an aircraft. Um, and yeah. NOAA is well aware of that. And they, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's just um, it's just a matter of, of coordinating and, uh, and finishing off those details. The agreement with NOAA and the future to be announced uh, airline or airlines in uh, in America, Will that give the same incremental revenue opportunities selling services directly to the airlines that is that you have now with uh, in the UK? Absolutely. That's the model that we're pursuing. So that that's what it, it actually took flight a few years to realize that this is the right approach. Uh, and, and as you described, uh, the, the opportunity to upsell once the, the sensor and the AFERS Edge and the SATCOM components are installed on the aircraft, the opportunity to upsell to the airline uh, based on that equipment is exactly where flight wants to be moving. So we get the revenues from the hardware for the, the full suite of products that gets installed on the aircraft. The weather SaaS revenue is there from day one. 
and we have that incremental opportunity to grow and expand with the airline providing the services that we would normally provide uh, if we were doing this for, for an airline that didn't have the sensor on it, the weather sensor. All right. Okay. That's great. I, I think we covered the key points of this. Is there anything else you want to uh, comment on or highlight before we wrap it up? No, maybe, um, maybe, maybe just that this is great validation uh, for the work that Flight has been doing. We've invested a lot uh, throughout the pandemic in the weather side of the business and in the avionics. Uh, and it, it comes together, contracts like these, both of these involve, um, involve the avionics suite with the, the weather sensor and our ground-based jet bridge products to, to format and send the information around the world as needed. So it's, it's wonderful validation. It came in nice and tight, uh, two contracts within a few weeks. Um, great validation for flight that we're moving down the right direction. Very positive times. All right. And I guess, does this also indicate that in other parts of the world, there are these opportunities as well? I, I presume the U.S. and the U.K. aren't the only countries looking for uh, enhanced uh, weather information, especially during these uh, times of uh, global warming and uh, climate change. Yeah, that's a great point, Martin. Thank you. Um, there are several other meteorological agencies around the world uh, that we've been talking to and that we'll continue to talk to. Uh, we believe that they've been waiting to see how NOAA and the UK Met would respond, how they would actually come together, what they would be, um, how the contracts would be structured. Uh, the UK Met and NOAA are are really uh, they're, they're top notch and, and they're they're very well respected by the other uh, agencies around the world. Uh, maybe the last comment would be that um, uh, we've also caught the attention of the World Meteorological Organization. That is a, a UN-based uh, group. And in December of this year, Flight was invited, uh, or has been invited to give a couple of presentations in Germany at the WMO. Uh, one of them will be on these programs that we're doing with NOAA and the UK Met. And the other one, uh, the other presentation will be on uh, contrail uh, avoidance and how you can use the, the products that Flight is providing to determine areas around the world where aircraft, if they were to fly through it, would be generating those contrails, which is that cloudiness, uh, that, that aircraft-induced cloudiness that is so bad for, uh, for climate change. So uh, validation and, uh, and a great opportunity by having these two main agent agencies uh, that are so well-respected uh, signing contracts with flight. That's impressive. All right. Well, congratulations, uh, Kent. I uh, appreciate you taking the time giving us an update on your, your progress in the uh, weather markets. Uh, thanks a lot and looking forward to uh, getting future updates. Cheers. Thanks, Martin. Bye-bye.